I never got these things as a kid. Only I just learned like three seconds ago how to actually do it. Uh, all I remember is remember Mr. Bean's Christmas special where he took them all out of like all like two packs and put stuffed all in the one and it went boom and anyways. All right, that didn't do anything. Gosh. Ooh. Sorry. What was that? Was that my? Ooh. What else we got here? Ooh, a purple crown. Okay, I'm gonna rock this. It smells like gunpowder. Or like, what were those uh, caps? Gun, I remember like the fake guns, the caps? That's it, that's all that comes in this thing. A paper crown, a plastic little eye thing, and then some jokes. Yay! Hey folks, I'm Matt from Fidel Gastros, and on this episode of Five Things I Love to Crush, we're gonna go through a little bit of Christmas spirit. As an Italian Canadian boy, I had a lot of great stuff around the house. Some things you might have seen before, some not so much. But I'm going to go through one at a time and show you how much I love to crush them over the holidays. Happy holidays! I think I've nailed those three words, or two words. Number five, panettone. Now, I'm actually not the biggest fan of panettone. It's kind of like Italian fruitcake. You'll see it in grocery stores. It's usually built like a pyramid. Chances are you're gonna walk right by it and your day will be fine. Uh, but as an Italian, you had to have panettone around at all times. You never knew when guests were coming over. Guests were coming over, bring out the panettone. That's what you do. You just get panettone out for people. So I've had my you know, opportunity to taste test a bunch and I find this one to be one of the better ones. It's more chocolate than anything, which is, thank God for that. Uh, but yeah, they're, they're fun, nice little box. A lot of times they're given as gifts before Christmas and people just go, oh, panettone. And it's kind of like a status symbol, like who got the, who's handing out the best panettones this year? Oh, Cinzia is. cinzia has got the best ones on the block. It's a true story. You think I'm making this all up, but this actually happens in Italian homes at Christmas time. Uh, the, the interesting thing is it's not easy to open. Like, you would think it would just come out this way, but I actually think I need to rip this. The bottom. And you never gift wrap a panettone. You just hand it to them in the box. You want them to know right away how much, and then depending on how much you've spent on the panettone, it's like, that's the quality of the alcohol that'll be brought out afterwards. A shitty panettone means like, mm, you're getting like the homemade wine. Good panettone, bring out the brandy. Oh, okay, so it just falls out like that. And now this is wrapped. Holy jeez. Some poor Italian woman had to literally hand twist all of these <laughs> in a factory in Puglia. You know, usually best served with a little bit of coffee. Ooh, the whole thing is chocolate. Oh, this thing's all chocolate. Boy, those memories are just flooding through my head right now. All right, number four. I didn't realize how Italian all these things were until you've lined them up. But anyways, number four is kind of a tie. Uh, one of them I actually think tastes better than the other. The other one has some incredible nostalgia in there. So we have torone, which is like nougat with uh, pistachios in it. And then bocce chocolates. Now, although bocce chocolates aren't my favorite chocolate, like they're good, what I love about them is the love notes inside. They do them in two languages, English and Italian. The Italian one's always beautiful. The English translation is always kind of, something's missing. So. Give you a little example. Okay, so I'm gonna try and translate this without uh, reading the English version. Non che istinto pari a quello del cuore. Okay, so cuore is heart, I know that. Instinto, instincts? Uh, instincts, instinto? Pari, I have no idea. Non, no instinct uh, comes in contact with my heart. Let's see if I'm right. There is no instinct, like that of the heart, I am so close. Oh yeah, that was like an 85% translation. 85%, I'm taking it. No, no, 85% translation. Anyways, okay, next. <laughs> okay, so this stuff, uh, it's a little odd if you've never had it before. Like, it's one of those things where you're like, oh, you gotta try this. And someone's like, okay, well, what is it? And you're like, oh, it's like nougat. And they're like, what? And then a lot of times, if you've never had it, if you haven't grown up on it, chances are you won't like it. But I, I enjoy it in small batches. It comes as a big, just a big bar, and you're just meant to like, just break off little pieces of the nougat. It's got pistachio in there. It's soft. 
Oh, I'm eating the paper on the side. I'm supposed to, oh shit. I'm eating the paper on the side. No, it's definitely paper. Anyways, Tarone Bachi, tied for number four. Number three, so I, I used to eat these on Christmas morning. So little Matt would run down the stairs. Actually, it was never, we always lived in a bungalow, so I never ran down the stairs. Little Matt would run out of his room and there'd be a Christmas tree with presents under it. And my mom would leave a tin of this with some milk out. And I love these butter cookies, but I, being the little sweet fiend as a child, I would always eat the ones that just had the big sugar crystals on it and leave the rest for my dad. I'm that kind of kid. Sorry, Dad. Sorry. Sorry. All right, so, although the cookies themselves might not be a very Italian Christmas thing, the tin, however, has been embraced by Italians for years. For example, I'd be in my nonna's house and I see a tin, I go, oh my God, I can't wait to eat the cookies. I open them up and it's like needle and threads in there for her sewing kit. True story. So number three, the sugar coated butter cookies. All right, number two. So obviously eggnog, people either love it or hate it. It's a very polarizing thing. I'm impartial, I, I can dig eggnog. I think if you drink too much, it gets a little, uh, a little frothy in the belly. But how do you one up a little eggnog? This fancy beverage here, Frangelico. You've probably seen it in the liquor store and go, what's that little, it looks like a hermit with a, like a friar rope around it. I think it's actually, that's the story behind it. Yeah, according to legend, Friar Angelico. There you go, that's the first line of the label. According to legend, Friar Angelico, or Frangelico, I don't know. Oh, Friar Angelico, Frangelico, that's where it comes from. Look at that, see, you learn something new every day. Long story short, if you have eggnog and you wanna jazz it up this holiday season, add a little Frangelico. That's a big glass of eggnog. Yikes. Also, like, you know Frangelico's good because it's so sweet that the, you can hear the sugars on the cap. Hear that? A lot of sugar. Anyways. That's the stuff right there. <laughs> Salute. I feel like it needs an ice cube or something. Not bad. Number two. Eggnog with a shot of Frangelico in it. And last but not least, my number one thing that I like to crush over Christmas, Ferrero Rocher. I mean, I think I actually remember one time waking up, you know, around Christmas and I had like 32 just foil wrappers all over me in bed because I went to town the night before and I totally forgot. They're great. They're so nicely packaged, and it's one of the few chocolates that I can just keep going. And it's beautiful. It's so beautiful. They've gotten very fancy with the packaging. They do like the pyramid now, or well, then there's like the jewelry box version. I like this because I don't like surprises. I want to know exactly how many Ferrero Fer Rocher's I have left. One level, perfect square, Ferrero Rocher's. If you want to change it up and you like coconut, which I do, the second cousin to Ferrero Rocher is the Raffaello. They're all in the same family, individually wrapped as well, covered in coconut. I feel like I'm one of the few people that actually likes these things, but more for me. Okay, great, fantastic. That's no, Ferrero Shea, it's a close second. And that's it. Well, there you have it, folks. Five things I love to crush, the holiday edition. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas, a Happy Holidays, a Happy Hanukkah, a Joyous Kwanzaa, and if I've forgotten one, I'm so sorry. A Happy Festivus for the rest of us. Make sure to like, subscribe, and leave a comment and let me know what your favorite thing to eat around the holidays is. Merry Christmas, you filthy animals. Ba 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 ba, and a happy new year. Ba ba ba. <laughs>